We're trying something very special today. You might have seen this before. It's uh, very spicy, but it's not a chili. It's um, It smells kind of citrusy, but it's not a lemon, obviously. It's called the Sichuan peppercorn and you guessed it, it has nothing to do with pepper. I want to dedicate this video to this super unique spice, answer all the Sichuan pepper questions you never knew you had, and also I'm going to show you three amazing ways to use this spice in your cooking. But Sichuan pepper is mostly known for its numbing effect. It almost like paralyzes your mouth and it stays that way for quite a bit. So earlier I headed to Go Asia, my local Asian grocery store. They are supporting this video and like any good Asian grocery store, they had at least two types of Sichuan pepper on stock. There is the red kind and the green kind. And here is the deal for this video. I'm gonna pour myself shots of Sichuan peppercorns. And before each segment of this video, I'm gonna chew on one of these shots for like 30 seconds and hopefully finish my script. Let's do this, cheers. Mmm, mmm. Ha! Ha! Holy shit. <laughs> I'm salivating like crazy. Oh, oh. The first 10 seconds are not that bad, but it's getting expo <laughs> It gets exponentially stronger. Um, <sighs> so it's sharp, it's floral, it's earthy. <laughs> My tongue, definitely gotta have to go easy. So there's this family of trees called Xanthoxylum. The husk of the fruit of some of these trees can be dried and turned into a spice, which we normally just call Sichuan peppercorn. And at least in terms of its like scientific classification, it is actually much closer to citrus than it is to pepper or chili. The Sichuan cuisine, which is one of the eight big culinary traditions of, Ch traditions of China, is what this spice is most well known for. Think of classic Sichuanese dishes like hot pot or mapo dofu, and hua jiao, or flower pepper as it's called in Chinese, is literally everywhere. Sichuan is located in central China, but that's by far not the only place where Sichuan pepper is being used. It's quite common all over China these days. And also, traditionally, a lot of neighboring regions have been using it as well. For example, the Himalayas. Think of momos, classic ingredient there. But also in Korea or in Japan, where it's called sancho. These are varieties of Sichuan pepper. It's not exactly the same thing. My script tells me to take the next shot. I don't think I'm ready. Cheers. <laughs> Holy crap. My body literally won't allow me to have any more citron pepper. That's crazy. My mouth is still burning. I'll take a pinch of these. Put these in my mouth. Ooh. Nope. This is what's going on. The peppers from the very first shot are still intensifying in my mouth. And every time I speak, the aromas circulate in my mouth and it's not pleasant. It almost feels like I'm licking a battery or something. What exactly is going on in my mouth? So according to science, the substance that is currently burning my face alive is a group of certain alkalamide compounds called sensuals, primarily hydroxy alpha sensual. I have no idea what I just said, but it's in a study. What I do understand is that these essentials are indeed from the same family as piperin and capsaicin, which is the stuff that makes black pepper and chilies spicy. And yet, the essentials found in Sichuan pepper are the only substance that gives you this tingling sensation in your mouth. By the way, only the husks of Sichuan pepper corn are used as a spice. Sometimes you will find black seeds, which are just very gritty and not full of flavor. And sometimes you can find little twigs or even thorns in your Sichuan pepper corns. Those are just debris, trash. You can definitely throw them away. You do not eat them. In fact, they can get dangerous. Should I try another shot? Okay, the green kind. I have to try the green kind. Mmm. Mmm, very different. Oh no. Oh! Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, whoa. So while the red one kind of reminded me of like a pine tree or a juniper tree, the green one, the green one has a lot more citrusy notes. I found the red one to be a lot more pungent, but the green one has a lot more of that numbingness, except it really creeps up on you, it gets stronger every second. Ah, that numbingness is so interesting. It's like, 
I would definitely call it spicy, but it's not the same as chili at all. And as much as, you know, in this high concentration, this is slightly unpleasant, it really makes me appreciate the different types of spiciness there are. I mean, we mentioned chili and, and Sichuan peppercorns, of course, but then think of like wasabi, ginger, onion, those are all different types of spiciness. Interestingly, in the Chinese language, this numbing spiciness is called ma, and it's a different word than la, which describes the spiciness of chilies. One thing you'll find a lot is that these two different sensations are being combined to form a flavor profile called ma la. Let me give you a famous example. There's the Sichuanese dish called la zi ji, which literally just translates to spicy chicken. You start out with these little bits of marinated bird, batter and fry them, and then you already get this crispy fried chicken crack. But then you proceed to stir fry these with peanuts and aromatics and go straight in with a few scoops of Sichuan pepper for that ma flavor, and of course some red hot chilies for la. Everything is then seasoned to form the legendary Sichuanese la zi. By the way, as always, you will find a detailed list of ingredients below, and I'm also gonna upload a slightly more detailed version of this recipe to Patreon. Okay. Whoa. It's always like the first few seconds are fine, and then it really stabs you in the back. Now you might be thinking, whoa, la zi that's a lot of like chilies and citron peppercorns in my food. Maybe that's a little bit too intense. <laughs> You're not supposed to eat the chilies or peppercorns. It's quite common in Chinese cuisine to add those for fragrance and for decoration, but then to leave them on a plate. But of course, there are also other ways to use citron pepper in cooking. Here's one, citron peppercorn oil. Just get a blend of any citron pepper you like. I went 50-50 on red and green. Briefly toast those in a pad and cover with oil. If you extra, you can add a piece of star anise. Simmer those on medium and then remove just before you feel they start to blacken, around 5 to 10 minutes. Then remove the peppercorns and once your oil has cooled down a bit, it is ready to use. This is a perfect solution for lazy cooks, you know? Make it once and you'll have this like instant citron peppercorn numbingness at your disposal. For example, I use it in a simplified lazy man's version of um, the classic Mapo Dofu. I just go for a big chunk of smoked tofu for that one, cubed and blanched instead of using the more traditional minced meat and soft tofu. And then we fry some aromatics in that Sichuan peppercorn oil, return the tofu, add some water for a quick brace, and then I thicken the whole affair towards the very end. And there it is, a mapo tofu in like 10 minutes or less. Oh, come on. Okay. I taste trees. Pine trees. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, there it is again. Ah, yeah. Okay. 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 So I've been holding something back, which is my favorite way of using Sichuan peppercorns ever, which is as a powder. If you want the unadulterated flavor, you can, of course, put them in a grinder. Yay, Sichuan pepper snow. But check this out. Here's my absolute favorite way to enjoy this stuff. In a pan, toast three parts salt to one part Sichuan peppercorns, any type. After a few minutes, your salt should start to turn brown. This is when we transfer everything into a blender, and just a few blitzes later, we have Sichuan peppercorn salt. You can give absolutely any dish that classic Sichuan pepper zing with that stuff, and I absolutely love it. And my face still burns like hell. I love it with seafood. One of the coolest and most classic applications must be the Cantonese salt and pepper shrimp. You marinate the shrimps in cooking oil for just a few minutes, then toss them in cornstarch and deep fry. And no, I don't normally deep fry this much, but you know, for this one, I just had to. The result will be a super light and crispy, almost tempura-like shrimp, but we're not done yet. We're tossing the shrimps in a wok with a few aromatics. Oh God. And of course, our Sichuan pepper salt. A little goes a long way here. Crunchy, peppery shrimp perfection. Oh man. This is like that one shot at a bar. You know you shouldn't be taking it. You should really be going home, but you still do. I know it might not look like it right now, but I actually really think citron pepper is an awesome ingredient and it should be used more. The dishes I showed you today, citron pepper is what makes those exciting. And you know what? Try using citron pepper in a Chinese cold dish. Mwah! I would really love to know if and how you guys use Sichuan peppercorns in the kitchen or outside the kitchen. <laughs> I'd also let me know if you're interested in seeing a slightly less silly video where we explore a few creative ways of using Sichuan peppercorns maybe outside of Chinese cooking. See you in the next one.